everybody my name is farmer phil and in today's video we are going to pick up the mowers and you may tell there's machinery all over the yard we're just cleaning up silage bit is clean and we're just cleaning another corner of the yard so pull everything out tidy all that and then yeah that's its own thing but it's time to go pick up the mowers because once that is done just have rory finishing up there then it's time to start servicing because we've kind of caught up on that end of it and now it's time to get stuff ready for silage but hopefully monday we'll get one but yes the big thing probably the worst kept secret on youtube did we buy the mowers or not well we'll go pick up the mowers and we'll tell you then whether we bought them or not i think at this stage everybody knows but anyways and we are here in the yard to pick up the mowers a drum roll please we're here to pick up the Samaz mowers. Yes, the butterfly mowers. We have bought the butterfly mowers. The worst kept secret on YouTube. We have bought them. Actually done it, we went and bought brand new mowers. And I know, this year has been given it away all winter, autumn, back in spring. And yeah, I probably should have taken out, if I had that I'd taken out of the cab, I could have sold buying them. Oh, did we buy or not buy the mowers? Would have been a bigger thing, but, um, the reason we left in the cab is because the slurry equip triple bar thing sits very nicely on top of it and you can straddle it both sides of the wires and it doesn't fall off. That's the only reason we're keeping this in the cab. Some as butterfly mowers, the ones we had last year, very same ones. So we'll get these home, we'll start servicing them, we'll have them serviced. We'll let you know why did we decide to make the jump and go from old school mowers. We haven't bought a new mower since 2008 so it's been 15 years since we last bought a brand new mower and this time we bought three of them. It's time to get these hooked up and home and we get servicing them. And at last we have it on. Screen's on. That seems good now to lift her up. Take that weight onto the back of her. Can't even remember how high I'm lifted. I know it's not that much. So yeah. That's the mower's on, time to go home. So yeah, it has definitely taken me longer than I was in open to. And that was just down to minor things the check chains that the stop the lift arm from slapping side to side uh, both of them were near enough seized a bit of hammering and the right spanner i was able to get them moving but it must have been we narrowed them in for the hair not to give the hair as much play and then it must be the clay that caught in under it and that then she wouldn't turn back out because the lift arms are quite wide on the tractor she's been quite far out so she seems pretty good now so yeah that's that's what took me the longest now to get that done. But anyways, we are rolling out. Looks a lovely cotton in. It's not till you pull it back on you realize just how wide 11 foot is on the front of the tractor. It's not too bad. And we're back. And if you're wondering, that muck on the front of that is from the plowing championships. The rig is back. So now Next thing is, I'm just going to go in and check see if Rory's happy enough. If he doesn't need me, come back out, I'll start servicing. So it's a full top to bottom check everything over, make sure all is good. Turn around the blades, because, you know, I'll be turned around again. And replace anything needs to be replaced, and just, you know, go through her all. Make sure she's ready for grass, but oh yeah. yeah. So, mowers are bought. Yes, the and, mowers are bought. And, Tech hook is broke. <laughs> yes, great job. And had. Well, it should be our mowers this time. <laughs> our mowers this time. Yeah. Yeah. She does need her bonnet painted though. She does, yeah, I know. We we'll get that done before the plowing now. I'm going to do a light bit of reading on the instruction manual. Good. So I finished reading the manual and 
it recommends changing all the oil and all the gearboxes, beds, everything, so I'm gonna do that. So I'll have to get some two drums of AEW 90 gear oil and um, get away of actually filling and emptying it because there shouldn't be anything wrong with the gear oil so we can keep it for greasing down boards and on the plough and things like that. And we are under the front mower, so I have my <coughs> front links locked, so should be all right. So my tool. Very easy to change these. It's their quick release. No getting bolts and the tops of bolts wore off and the hardship that used to come with trying to change blades in the John Deere. Let's just pop it, turn it, and back on. So you can see that's the edge that's wore. It's nicely rounded. But then you look the other side, it's ready to rock and roll. So, oh man, she's back up and she's in. Also, have a box of new knives. I actually have a couple of boxes of new knives. So, just if I see any that's bent or damaged, that there's no point turning, we can change them. And that's what the new knife looks like. So, double sided. <laughs> Is the blades all changed so we've used nearly a full box of knives so these are all ones that were either chipped on the, uh, the back edge or you get one of the ones maybe was this one is um bent down so once you flipped it it was going to be striking the beds that's them. I've also, while I was under there, I wriggled all the discs, making sure everything felt tight, felt sound. So, all three beds are good that way. So, I just have to do the oil on them tomorrow, hopefully. And now, it's just grease everything. So, I may go get the Milwaukee grease gun, a cartridge of grease, and hit the time lapse one. And that is the back more greased with the exception of the shaft there as I want to take it off because I need to release up that so it's free release up my two check chains grease the half axles get the back end of the tractor I have a leaking fit in there so I might want to take it off and see the o-ring might be gone in it we have a box of o-rings there so we might get the right ones to fit in and stop that leak so now it's time to do gearboxes so two on the front it's bed of the bed one gearbox there there's one gearbox in the middle one gearbox there so there's one two three four five five gearboxes three beds not too bad not too bad so i have me drum of oil in the back of the golf and i also bought this because currently all we have for putting oil into gearboxes is if we have if a liter Thing works we'll use that but sometimes that doesn't work and we use a 60 mil syringe which takes a long time to put stuff in so I went to, to uh, the local garage see could I find something this was what I could find I was looking for I, if anyone knows where to get them send me a link 
of the yolk you put into a can and you can hand pump it into it i seen it there on finnegan's farm fantastic job would love to get my hands on one so if anyone knows where i can get one send me a link to where it is and it'd be brilliant so now i have to figure out what's the best way of letting the oil out Well, the last this is coming up, open up the plug the other side, the fillet to see it in the plug. That's it full, so it didn't take a liter. Fill it to the check mark. Oh, yeah. Do a pair of gloves. So, uh, I call it a stroke of ingenuity. Found a bit of piping and siphoning oil out of gearbox. Not a lot, but it's coming. And that way I get the old oil out and get some new oil into it without actually having to try and get so you can't even get the allen key up in there but this will do the job siphoned oil out of it quite happy with myself And I have it done. That's all five gearboxes, oil changed. Side ones, both sides there. Dead easy, oh. You get the thing under it, very easy. Center one, easy emptied. Hard fill, took a lot of oil, so it did. took a, quite a lot of oil. I have, I'm going to need another drum of oil now to be able to do the bed in the moors. I have about tight 10 liters left, which I don't think is enough. So it's taking a fair sup of oil, but they're all changed. Them two gearboxes, the oil in them was, mm, but black of itself, a little bit, you know, mm, but it's changed, it's the main thing, it's changed. But all the rest of gearboxes seem fine, but them ones is just a bit, mm. Tractor needs a little bit done, but hopefully we'll get time and we'll get that done tomorrow before we start mowing, hopefully. As per usual, lastminute.com. Someday I'll get away from last minute. Someday. That is my life goal. To get away from lastminute.com. Anyways. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. And we are back. Not a familiar setting of the moors, but the harrow. Because today has been one of them kind of a days. This morning I had to go off harrow with the 7618 put in another 20 acres of oats which leaves us we're down to the last 25 acres but um anyways went to do that grand started up done about 20 minutes tried to start boiling right that's not right so went rooting investigating couldn't figure it out thought thermostats were stuck so we took the thermostats out in the field got them out and she boiled again turns out the water pump was gone so that meant right water pumps a big job just radiator a whole lot of stuff has to come off that's not going to be done straight away we have to order the bit so we have the bit ordered that's fine it's going to take a day or two to come um and yeah i had to take off the motor cup of this tractor do the harrow and by the time all that happened 
it's later on in the evening now, now I'm back, which the plan was that around this time I should have had the first, the big field mode and we moved on to the next bit of ground, but instead I'm still have servicing to do. So yeah, the joys of it. So what we're doing now is going to wash the 6499, clean out the cab, wash the engine, get here, her, all serviced up, and then we'll go finish the moors. Rory has spent the day getting machines ready in the yard, so he's just done the rake, washing, servicing, and he's also washed the loading shovel, left it ready to be serviced too, which Father Phil should be getting to tomorrow. While I'm mowing, he'll just finish up the shovel and the trailer. Shouldn't take him too long. There's everything is fine. It's just check all the gearboxes, drop boxes, screws, tires, rams. You know yourself. Nothing too strenuous. I got 20 million things to do before I can come home to you. But to straight and get them right, I may not make it back tonight. How I long to be with you, but I got all these damn things to do. Must be done in case the sun goes down before the race is won. And now that is the tractor washed so give her a quick spruce into the windows and that so it's easier to see knock some of the dirt off but the big thing was clean the radiators and clean the engine just to take the dirt off it and the back end because a heavy amount of clay on them can reduce the engines and back ends effectiveness of cooling down so we're going to service up the back end so grease everything half axles all of that while I have it off top rope with oil and um, changed the air filter. Uh, she was serviced, uh, not not 300 hours ago, her service every 300 hours. So she'll be good for maybe 100 hours into the season. She was done before we started the tillage work. So she get the first round of work done and then we'll have to service the engine and the filters. But we'll change the air filter because she was at clay. Just get the clay out. So that's the back end serviced. So we have our all grazed, half axles grazed, everything moving nice and freed up, tightened up the two spools there that seem to be leaking a bit. So hopefully that has our sour top drop with oil. So now it's time to put her on. And we're on. Just as simple as that. And as you can tell, daylight has fast evading us. So one thing. We'll just do I could probably do again the torch out but I check and make sure none of my gearboxes are leaking so the easiest way is just checking the bottom bung let's try just it's been a day so if there's any leak at all they should have started leaking now when they get hot they expands mm, don't think that could be a problem but just check on my gearboxes because I don't want any issues let's try that's your box of checks, so that's good. So now, moors. Time to do the beds. And I think with the back moors, when I lift them, they go from being like, imagine like that, to like this. Once you lift them and then they pick up that side. So if I lift them till they're like that, the bungs are at the outside edges. So then that leaves her nicely to fall out. And then the fill point is on the high point in here. It doesn't actually have a fill point down, as a fill point straight in. So if I can at all, I want to try and measure how much oil comes out. I'll just recheck the book. Father Phil reckons about two litres, which I should just about have enough, about 10 litres. I'll double check to see, does it say how much needs to go in? So if it does, sound, just measure it, put it in. Yeah. Three more jobs. And then 
we can go more. So she is definitely um, dirty. Here we have her new one. Yeah, I have it. Put it in. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. It was on the other boxes. White one. Oh, need a lot of things. Take the ends off the beds if you're able. That one in especially because there's nothing coming out of it. That's that changed. Perfectly clean. Yeah. That's the oil coming out, and the oil is perfect. Absolute pristine. Perfect. So yeah. drain away there to clean all that up. You have to get gasket maker. I don't think we have enough. So, first gear box, our bed is empty. So, check to make sure that it's all. Clean. Face is clean. No. Gasket sealer. Tonight. Yeah, it's uh, over there beside them are too. Oh. Yeah, they have this one just back. Just tightening it up now. How tight do I go with these? I've seen the gasket sealer comes out a good thing anyways, yeah. yeah. They're very small key. Mm. Now when the oil goes in, we'll just double check that there's nothing there. Make sure, to be sure, to be sure. Right, they're good. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. I go for here. We do this three more times. Well, two more times. Father Phil's gonna start putting in dial. And she is done. Ready for grass, literally into the yard, fill with diesel, and get going. We're ready to go. All done, all service taken. A bit longer than I was hoping. Lastminute.com as usual. But she's done. She's good to go. Good to go. I suppose. The final question, why did we decide to go with these mowers? And it, it come down to time saving. Tick boxes. Yeah. T time it, boxes. It, the tractor could drive them. Tra yeah. Number one. Number two. Time. Time saving. It, Huge time saving. The, it's unreal how quicker we can mow, now, mow along with that. Some lads go up the argument, five by three mowers when you could buy a big M. But you can't go off and pump slurry with a big M. No. <laughs> and we had the tractor. Yeah. They didn't think the tractor would drive them. But it turned out she did. Turns she out she drive them. They're quite easy driven. They're, they're easy driven. Number three, we were able to afford them. Yeah. So yeah, that's... What do you do? Them three things, that's great to be able to keep them. And big thanks to Timmy and all at Eggman Hagri and Samaz themselves for yeah. looking after us so well. Looked after us well, brought us over to Birmingham and we may have a little trip to Poland to see how, the, how they summer. make them. But big thanks to them because couldn't have done without them. And for Timmy, believing in us dropping them down to us and letting us have a toy with them because I don't think other than that we'd have never even looked at buying yeah, butterflies. Yeah, it it's not something we'd have thought about. Yeah. No, not butterflies, no. No, but so. once, once you see how just quicker they are, it's very hard. It was it was it was near impossible to, to let them back. 
because just the time saving. The groupers on the back, we have the option now for farmers, we can group for them, cut back on the cost of having to rake up the ground and it's just, it's one less job to do. In, in good weather is better yeah. silage. So. It's one less job to do and you get higher protein size. Now I don't think we're grouping our own because it's very leafy. It's we want leafy to get it needs a bit of a wilt. Needs a bit of a wilt. And we may have still a little bit it may be still a little bit in nitrogen. I don't it's, think it is. It's only got twenty five. Yeah, it, got, it didn't get a lot. It got so little it nearly shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. So. And the front more I know we did say it's been the big side, but every farm we went to last year I was able to get into it. The tightest was I had to back in a gate because I couldn't get the swing in off the yeah. road. You, you may have a major overlap when you're cutting, but it's but huge. You can, you can yeah, I, you have a minute. You don't. You can't go around the corner, but you can follow the contours of the field left and right. And your no stripes left. Yeah, with it, with, it with a reasonable advantage. comfort. Yeah, it has the only thing is it, on a. It's, it's a, a bit wide on a the medium road. road. It's a pain in the back leg because it's just that bit wide. Yeah, yeah, it's just a bit wide. Oh no, an hour road is no problem. No, because they yeah. can't get by you. They have to stop. <laughs> it's on a road where they can get by yeah. you normally. Is just the problem. remember, so have you. Yeah. So anyways, we're going to leave it at that for today's video. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. And silage is here. It's time to go mowing. Good luck.